borrowed out, so I'm heading to a place called D Park or Discovery Park in Senran in Hong Kong. HSBC have invited me down to check out this cool area. They've made rugby pitch and a few challenges, part of their Try Rugby program, which I'll explain a little bit later. And then I'm heading back home to uh, do a bit of cooking. And the doctor is in the house. How cool is this setup? So they've got about a 20 by a 10 meter pitch here and they're gonna do a minis tournament. There's gonna to be a couple of hundred kids here over the next couple of days. And I think either the winning team or a couple of the MVPs from the tournament get to be the ball boys at the Hong Kong Sevens, which is very cool in a couple of weeks time. There's some skill challenges in the background here. We'll go check them out in a little bit. There's one for passing, one for running and one for try scoring so they should be good fun to have a go at uh, but before that we're going to do a little skills video jump into why we use the base pass in rugby sevens the scrum half or base pass is a skill in sevens that every player needs to know and be comfortable with a base pass is when a ruck is formed after a tackle and the ball is passed off the floor to the next attacking player. The speed and physicality of sevens often means there's good competition in the ruck so the ball might not come out cleanly. Equally, defensive teams often send a defender around the side of the ruck to put pressure on the nine as soon as they pick the ball up. In an ideal world, every single base pass or scrum half pass will come off the floor as it's far quicker. But when there is disruption in the ruck and the ball doesn't come out cleanly, we can use the pull-out base pass. So the first key to this technique is our footwork. If someone's made a break and we're hairing after them, we need to chop our feet so we're not flying into the ruck or slipping over ourselves. So as we get closer, we want to chop our feet. We want to plant our foot right next to the ball, try and grip the ball in the same grip that we're going to pass it with, and we want to power back a good two, three steps. This is to create distance between us and the ruck and anything that can potentially knock the ball out of your hands. The next part of this technique as you're driving back is to snap the ball to your hip. We don't want to leave the ball out here as it could get knocked out of your hand. Getting it to your hip each time will help with accuracy as you're starting from the same starting point each time. Also from this point you can see what the defenders are doing. If the option changes from passing you can still run with the ball or kick it if needed. So at the moment, as we're driving back, snapping the ball to our hip, all of our momentum is going backwards. If we keep letting momentum go backwards, it's going to be very hard to stop us passing the ball straight into the air over the receiver's head. So anytime we're driving backwards, you need to really fight to keep your chest down over the ball, ready for the pass. So far we've chopped our feet as we approach the ball, try to pick it up in the same grip we're going to pass with, drive back two or three steps, snap it to our hip, fight with our chest to stay over the ball. The last bit of this pass is to make sure our hands and our arms and our chest all point towards the target in a good finishing position. So the longer we can get our arms and we're pointing exactly where we want to pass, the more accurate and the further you'll be able to pass. Oh God. Oh. So thank you. In sevens, we want to always follow our pass so we can be there for an offload to clean a ruck out or to celebrate with our teammates if we score a try. If you have any comments about the pull-out base pass technique, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. We're now going to go check out some more of this Try Rugby programme. So they've got this awesome little setup and as I said, they've got a passing challenge here where you can pass to some of the Hong Kong players. Bit of a picture opportunity and there's a run-in and a try scoring challenge in the background. Russell's a lot bigger than I remember. They've done him a solid here. Big boy. Ooh. One. Two. I've always seen these on social media. I think they look quite hard. The ball never looks like it should fit into the hole. So that's pretty difficult. But um, yeah, cool little skill challenge. Oh, straight in. Moving on to the next game slash challenge for the kids. So they've got these two runways so you can compete against your mate. Some hurdles to run over. I think they've got to go round the player at the end and then back to score a try. Fastest time wins. You can check it up on this board here. So the last one is this try scoring grid. It's a 
You have one player either side of the big rugby ball, they're attached to a bungee, and the different squares that are on the floor correspond to different points. Uh, you have to try and run out, put the ball down, run back, touch another square. They were telling me they were thinking of bringing this to the HSBC booth at the seven, uh, but they weren't sure adults after two days in the south stand would be particularly safe with a bungee wrapped around them, which I think is a good shout from them. And that's pretty much the setup here at the Tri Rugby Programme here in Sen Wan in Hong Kong. Uh, there's going to be a minis tournament, coaching from the top Hong Kong Rugby Union coaches. It's all aimed at primary school teachers and kids just to get them involved, spread rugby around Hong Kong. I think it's an amazing initiative. I'm so glad I came down. I think kids and teachers are going to have loads of fun. Right, it's time to get back into the city. Let's go make some lunch. Hong Kong really comes alive at lunchtime and there's all these little markets where you can go to get some fresh produce all the way from veg to meat as well, so just heading over to one of these now. Today you're going to make some chicken tacos with a bit of salsa, really fresh, all the nutrients and proteins and everything that you need. I eat it quite regularly, you can prep things like marinating the chicken beforehand, really easy, quick lunch to do. Thank for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you want to stay up to date with the videos, consider subscribing. If you want to see more recipes and other skills, let me know in the comments. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day.